Spectrum is hiking its prices, Disney Plus could surpass Netflix, and Fubo TV is calling out HBO Max. All that and more in this week's episode of Cord Cutting Weekly. Hi folks, and welcome to Friday, February 25th, 2022. This is Cord Cutting Weekly, the show where we wrap up the past week in cord cutting and streaming news. And like we said, at the very top, we've got several stories to talk about, including an incoming price hike for some Spectrum users and Fubo TV throwing shade at certain streaming services. But first, of course, if you haven't done so already, please do take a second to consider clicking on those like and subscribe buttons down below. Those are both really great ways to help out our channel and we genuinely appreciate it. And as always, for anyone that's joining us for the very first time this week, just a quick note. For all of the stories we're about to discuss here, you'll find links to those stories included down below in the video description. And those links will bring you on over to our news website, cordcuttersnews.com, where you can stay up to date on all things streaming 24-7. And now with all of that laid out, let's dive straight into the news, starting with price hikes from Spectrum. So starting next month, some Spectrum TV users could see their bills increasing by a few dollars per month. The company sent out notifications outlining the price changes, which include broadcast TV fees going up by $3 per month and equipment fees jumping by $1 to $9.99 per month per receiver. Spectrum says the changes will take effect on March 18th, 2022. Although we are hearing reports that these changes may not necessarily affect all users. So it's definitely worth checking to see if Spectrum has sent you a notification. And also keep a closer eye on your next few billing cycles, just in case. In any case, you can find out more in our full post linked down below in the video description. In acquisition news, local TV group Tecna announced it will be acquired by a pair of private equity firms. In all, Standard General and Apollo Global Management will purchase the company for $24 per share as part of a multi-billion dollar deal. The company, formed back in 2015, currently owns 64 local stations in 51 markets around the country, although a handful of those stations are expected to head over to Cox Media Group if the deal closes. If the sale passes regulatory and shareholder approvals, Tegna says the deal could close sometime during the second half of 2022. And naturally, you can find out more in our full post linked down below. And just as a recap, as we discussed in a recent video, Roku's made the move away from non-certified, aka private channels. Non-certified channels offered a way for developers to create and run fully functioning Roku apps outside of the official Roku channel store. That came in handy for app testing purposes, but certain industries also took advantage of the capabilities, including those looking to distribute pirated content. Developers still looking to leverage non-public test environments can make the move over to the company's new beta channel feature, while the unsanctioned apps themselves are on the way out. You can find out more in our recent video, which we'll link to in the video description down below. This week, Sinclair shared more details about the future of its Bally Sports Regional Sports Network and its planned streaming service. During a conference call this week, Sinclair CEO Chris Ripley said its planned streaming service is expected to soft launch during the second quarter of the year, starting with a handful of Major League Baseball teams. The plan is later to expand to NHL and NBA teams that the company currently has streaming rights to. Unfortunately, Ripley did not share exact pricing details, though he has denied rumors of a $23 per month estimate. In any case, we'll continue to keep an eye on Sinclair's streaming efforts. Meanwhile, in long-term prediction news, we've got new data from digital TV research that suggests Disney Plus could surpass Netflix in total users by the year 2028. Now, of course, projections in general are tricky business, especially ones years out into the future, so take all of this with the appropriate amount of salt. But the research firm's projections say that Disney Plus could add some 146 million subscribers between 2021 and 2027, which would bring its total to roughly 276 million. That would place Disney Plus just behind Netflix's estimated user base, which digital TV research places around 282 million by the end of 2027. And then by 2028, the firm expects Disney Plus to take over the top spot. Again, these are all just projections and long-term ones at that, but it'll be interesting to see how Disney Plus grows over the years. For now, though, what do you think of the possibility? Do you think Disney has what it takes to claim the number one slot, or is Netflix too entrenched to be moved? Feel free to sound off in the comments section down below. 
In earnings news, this week we learned the latest numbers from DISH, including subscriber totals for its pay TV and Sling TV services. On the pay TV front, DISH reported a loss of 595,000 subscribers during the fiscal year that ended on December 31, 2021. Meanwhile, Sling ended the year on a slightly positive note with 2.49 million subscribers. However, that number does include a decline of about 70,000 users for the last quarter. Overall, that year and total keeps Sling in third place among live TV streaming services trailing YouTube TV and Hulu. And you can find out more in our full post link down below. In NFL news, we've heard reports that Amazon is aiming to establish a new tradition of sorts alongside the long-running Thanksgiving Day games. Specifically, the Sports Business Journal said the mega retailer, which is the new home of Thursday Night Football, is also looking to offer games on Black Friday. So far, there's no official word from the NFL on whether such an idea will move forward or not, but it is clear that Amazon is looking to leverage its new Thursday night football offering to entice more subscribers to its Prime Video service. Plus, and this is pure speculation on our part, but maybe a Black Friday football game could convince more folks to stay home and keep streaming instead of going out and shopping at Amazon's brick-and-mortar competitors. Just a thought. In any case, we'll keep an eye out on this potential development moving forward, but in the meantime, feel free to sound off in the comment section down below on whether or not a Black Friday football game would interest you. Speaking of the NFL, we're continuing to follow the ongoing saga that is NFL Sunday Ticket. So far, it seems clear the league is intent on transforming the service into a streaming product, but we're still a bit light on specifics. However, a new report from Pro Football Talk suggests the closest thing we have to a certainty is that the NFL's deal with DirecTV could be coming to a close. The league's current Sunday ticket deal expires at the conclusion of the 2022 season, and the NFL has said it's eyeing streaming for the future. And again, we're still tracking a number of big-name players who could be in the running for Sunday Ticket's new home, including Apple, Amazon, and Disney, among others. If a tech company does land NFL Sunday Ticket, Pro Football Talk says it expects the league to offer the entire package to that new partner. And that new company would focus primarily on streaming, but might still offer satellite rights to those consumers who don't have the necessary internet access. In any case, we'll continue keeping an eye on the story, and you can catch up on all the latest in our full post linked down below in the video description. Fubo TV also shared its latest stats and figures during its Q4 earnings release. Overall, the live TV streaming service added some 185,000 users during the quarter, pushing its overall total to 1.13 million. That was enough for Fubo TV to tout record year-over-year -year growth, adding that it beat 2021 expectations of 1.1 million users by year's end. And looking forward, the live TV streaming service said it expects to reach over $1 billion in total revenue for 2022. So, stay tuned. And while we're on the subject of Fubo TV, the company also used this week to call out some of its streaming competitors. In a letter to shareholders, Fubo TV took time out to go after studio and network-based streaming services. The company says those services lack the wide variety of content needed to sustain growth, saying that, quote, we believe a narrow content portfolio is insufficient for most consumers' needs. Fubo TV went on to call out HBO Max specifically, saying, quote, Similarly, large-scale day-and-date movie releases like Wonder Woman 1984 do not alone drive significant step changes in subscriber growth or retention and are equally suboptimal from a monetization perspective. And you can see what else Fubo TV had to say in our full post linked down below, and feel free to weigh in on whether or not you think the live TV streaming service is right. And of course, you can sound off in the comment section down below. And so there you go. Those were some of the top headlines from the past week. And like we always say, thank you all for watching. If you haven't done so already, please do consider clicking on those like and subscribe buttons down below. Those are both tremendous helps to our channel and they help signal to YouTube that it should keep recommending our content to more and more viewers. For now though, I thank you all again for tuning in this week and we'll see you next month in March. My name is Philip Palermo. I hope you all have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Take care.